Drug Mart, all Labor Day weekend out at Burke Lake Front Airport. It's the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th of September. Tickets are only available in advance. You can't go and buy them at the gate. So for more info or to buy those tickets, just make sure you hit up clevelandairshow.com. If you want to win them, I'll give you four, two pair for the Cleveland National Air Show for you and three pals over the holiday weekend. Good luck. Call 10 216 578 1007 or 800 348 1007. The Alan Cox Show. Sure, you could listen to another show, but then how would you find the puppies we've buried in boxes around the city? 100.7 WMMS. Got that trip to Vegas to give you in about seven or eight minutes. Listen for that next keyword. It'll be your last of the day to get out there with a pal for our iHeartRadio Music Festival. It's at the T-Mobile Arena, 22nd and 23rd of next month with Foo Fighters and Public Enemy and 30 Seconds to Mars and Fall Out Boy and Sheryl Crow and uh, many, many more. You and a friend, get your tickets for the event, fly you out, put you up. I think there's a thousand bucks cash in there too. So it's a nice little package. And it is a sold-out show, so you'll be breathing rarefied air, my friend. So another uh, keyword here in a few minutes. Hey, Chris. Chris hey. McGarry? I see Chris from Menor on my Hello? screen. Uh, yes, I am Chris McGarry from uh, on your screen. I can't believe I'm even on your show right now, man. What's, uh, what's up, Chris? Listen, I uh, what's up, Chris, is... I was accused of a crime from a Ooh. family member. Yeah, okay. And, and, and I got a I got a no bill. And you know what a no bill is? A no. Do you have any a, idea what a no bill is? I don't know Mary's what it is. Dream. <laughs> what is that? Uh, that? That means that's a grand jury a no thing, yeah. Is, it, yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly, and. I just got the paperwork, and I just want to let your 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 listeners know, or your viewers know, if you stand your ground. And I'm recovering, Mary. By the way, nice too. So um, it was. I was just elated. I got the papers today from the public defender's office, and I was cleared of everything. And I just want to let you know that sometimes. The police and everybody takes it too far. Well, Chris, sure I, I, we're, we're, I feel I feel like we're kind of skipping around here. I mean, first off, the no bill just means that they, they had insufficient evidence. Yeah, pretty much. Right. So it doesn't, doesn't necessarily my, my, mean you're innocent. Was, means that Okay, so what were you accused of doing? Domestic violence. Domestic violence, okay. And so your, yes, your and wife, it is was, it, was it your wife or a girlfriend or who? My daughter. Your daughter. Well, there's a wrinkle. Okay, so she my calls da- the she calls the cops and you get charged. I got charged. I, they put an ankle bracelet on me yeah. for eight months. Yeah. And then and she didn't want to show up for court. And so I had to I had to mentally take this for eight months. And then all of a sudden you got no bill. Here it is, it's done. Right. I it's kind of funny you know, how that works out, isn't it? Where victims of domestic violence, alleged or otherwise, you know, they feel, uh, gee, I wonder why they feel like they wouldn't be safe testifying in court. Can't put my finger on it. But nevertheless, Chris, I, 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 I obviously I only I only know your side of the story. So that's kind of incomplete. Um, you'd be getting a no bill from me, too. But... um. Uh, so the, the so the end result is you said if you stand your ground. I mean they they didn't. It sounds like uh, you got lucky. Well, yeah, in a sense, yes, I did get lucky, Alan. And, and what 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 it was is the fact that she came at me and she aggressed me, and I had to restrain her. I see. And, How old? And, and she. She's 23, and she's got a newborn upstairs. 23, okay. And you guys, and it, you guys, it's fair to say that at the very least, the two of you got into it. She got it. She came down and it came down to me. Why was and, she upset? She, now she's, 
because I I I, I relapsed. I see. That's okay. Why. Yep. And she's got a baby in the house and doesn't want any of that Michigas around, probably. Well, I yeah, exactly. I I can I can agree with her with, with uh, you know what she's saying about that. But uh, on the other hand, she's upstairs smoking uh, wax uh, out of control, and almost is in a sarcasis kind of uh, mode. And I don't know if anybody is out there listening to this. And you you have to put a stop to you have to put your foot down and say no, you can't do this. Right. And I, and I'm in a situation where what, what do I do, Alan? Yeah, but but what Chris, do do? it doesn't sound like you, it didn't sure. sound like I mean, given the fa- given what you're alleging or what you're saying happened, because again, this is just your side. It doesn't sound like in right. the state that you were in that was getting your daughter upset. It doesn't sound like you were in any position to be telling somebody else what not to do. Sounds exactly. like you're, it sounds but like I your mean, faculties were right. compromised at the very least. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I agree with you one hundred percent. Are you? Do you? Do you have any? Um, um, was part of this no bill an agreement that you wouldn't have any contact with your daughter, or no? No, I'm still living with her. I'm still here in the house. All right. Well, I hope it goes better (laughs) from here on out, Chris. Okay, well, I'm just saying that if anybody's out there, just because you have multiple, I have, I just got out of the penitentiary. Multiple. Okay, so so your, your thesis is you don't want people to prejudge just because you're somebody who is pretty regularly in trouble with the law. It, it, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm a I'm a chronic alcoholic. Right. Um, I, I'm I'm trying to recover. Right. And I really got nowhere where else to go. Well, Chris, and yeah. Well, Chris, is I, it is it at least fair to say that um, uh, you're somebody who has a tendency to get himself in trouble? Oh yeah. Right. So that's I not mean, prejudging. That's yeah, judging. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Okay. Listen, Chris. I hope that uh, I hope that you uh, uh, maintain uh, blah blah blah. Whatever. Okay. Thank you, Chris. There's Chris out in Menor who's got the bracelet off, and uh, I guess according to him, if you stand your ground, uh, uh, <laughs> early candidate for father of the year. Again, I'm not a lawyer. I mean, familial relationships are tough enough without putting substances in the mix. But again, a no bill. They just go, we don't have enough evidence to indict you, right? It's the opposite of Trump, right? Where they have too much evidence to indict him on multiple counts in multiple states. Chris's situation was, of course, the exact opposite of that. But I hope that at the very least he can uh, uh, play it straight so that he can hang out with his grandchild and his daughter. That would be the optimum situation for him. Uh, It's just a shame that he and his daughter can't go to Las Vegas on us. (laughs) What better way for two people in recovery to mend fences than to head out for a big weekend in Sin City? It's the iHeartRadio Music Festival, middle of next month. And uh, we'll fly you out, put you up, and the whole bit. All right? So this is your last keyword of the day. I think you get three of these a day. Rover's got one. Stansbury's got one. I have one. So listen closely and good luck. Now, your chance at a trip to our 2023 iHeartRadio Music Festival. Text the nationwide keyword, LUCKY, to 200-200. You'll get a confirmation text and info. Standard data and message rates apply in this nationwide contest. That's LUCKY to 200-200. There was a girl who was getting dragged on social media. This is an Australian traveler. Who her take on the United States rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Her take on the United States is this country has way too many flags in it. Way too many American flags in this country. I mean, uh, the man in black said it. Americans can be mighty proud of that ragged old flag. But this girl, Mia Chloe was on TikTok, um, was just traveling in this country. I don't know if it's her first time here, 
But this is a girl who ended up having to deactivate her social media accounts because, if nothing else, Americans are level-headed mm-hmm. at every turn. And so um, nothing uh, bad happened to her. There are too many American flags. Like, they're on houses, they're on cars, I saw them on couch cushions. Like, I don't know who's making these American flags, but they'd be making a bloody fortune. I'm like, you're the only country that I know that does this. Like, I think I could draw the American flag from memory. Like, I think I could make a bloody sculpture out of it. That's how many times I've seen it. It's enough. Let's pull back on it, okay? I think a big part of this is that the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, who I guess has nothing better to do, uh, retweeted her video, and of course that got everybody upset. Now, is she wrong? Of course not. But she's from another country. She's an Aussie. And people don't like this. It's okay if we say it. I love that people pretend we still care about the flag, by the way. People replace the Trump flags are more important to people for Christ's sake, in a lot of parts of this country, or they've completely abandoned what the American flag symbolizes, because right. it is just a symbol after all. They just want to... So this nonsense about how, you know, she is right. I mean, you can make a bloody fortune making American flags, but this notion... Wait, are you telling still... me that people are monetizing patriotism? I'm not telling you that. All I'm saying is... And if you're not a, you're not a good American, if you don't have... An American flag on your truck. There are a lot of flags. There There are are a lot of flags. I mean, I'm not a flag guy. So what? I mean, it's not hurting anybody. It's not hurting anybody. That's right. You want to have a flag on everything you own. I don't understand why that's a problem. But as a person from another country who comes here and somebody goes, oh, how is it? What's your take? And her thought is, boy, there's a lot of goddamn flags here. Um, Yeah, that's her take on it. And listen. Anybody from any other country in the world can see the dichotomy between how much people purport to love flags here and how much they purport to love the things that the flag stands for. There's a big gap in between those two things at this point. Because it's what they believe the flag stands for. By flying the flag, feel free to feel free to read the Constitution of the United States. Well, no, they know the parts. Do that. You know how long it is. I'm just telling you. They know the parts that are important to them. That's why they fly it. Alan, it's like two pages long. Get to one of those houses on the highway that say "Stop in for a pocket Constitution." Pull in. You put it right in your uh, right in your inside pocket. Fine, but yeah, obviously. I don't know why she didn't see this coming. I think because she's probably Australian and it probably didn't occur to her because she's coming from a culture that does not have a flag slash fake patriotism fetish. I don't see this country does. Now, mind you, there are a lot of genuinely patriotic people in this country, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But there's also a lot of fake patriotism. And so that plays into that. I think there's a lot of flags that just aren't taken care of, mainly this one that's across the street. It's not an American flag, but it's a holiday in flag, but it is tattered, and it looks bad. The one that's up there on the pole? Yeah, it looks terrible. And I bet they didn't even read the Holiday Inn Constitution before they flew it. <laughs> no, I bet they didn't. Which is The Holiday Inn Express. Honestly. Like, it's, a different, it's a different constitution for the Holiday Inn Express. Uh, it's, a, it's an amendment. Well, maybe... Um, Maybe the express flag is different than the normal holiday in flag. That's it. It should be. No, it's and like by a the state way, flag. but also if you were to get up there and untatter that flag, you know, a lot of the, we have a flag in front of well, our you, house. It's, it's not all a, wrapped around, but it's also that's what I'm saying. Like, but, tattered. You, but the but the wind is going to wrap it around the pole, and you can't go up there. You can't send somebody up every day See, to unwrap the flag. That's the thing about flags: is the wind is their best friend, but also their worst enemy. Well put. <laughs> because a little bit of wind makes a flag look amazing. Dance. But too much wind, and all of a sudden, it's getting all ripped to shreds. That's why I don't understand Almost the guys. Almost like wind is patriotism. A little bit makes it dance, but too much tatters it. Mm-hmm. Rips it to shreds. We've done it. Mary Santora has figured it out. The wind of patriotism. Somebody fight. 
Oh, wrong one. Sorry. That wasn't what I wanted. That wasn't oh. the wind of patriotism. Well, not the wind That's of like the guys that, that will put it on their trucks, and it's like, okay, if you're just driving in a parade or something and you want to put a flag on your truck, that's fine because then it's going to just look good. But when you're driving down the highway with an American flag behind your truck, that's actually incredibly disrespectful to the flag because you're going 70 miles per hour and it's just tearing the flag to shreds. Hmm. So I guess, or who's that one country singer that likes to set them on fire? Jason Aldean. Yeah. In you know. that music video he released where he's setting them on fire. He's like, I go to small towns and I set flags on fire. I think that's you don't have song, balls unless you're rolling coal, man. He's out there rolling coal. I don't know. Please, hands on your heart. Only we hailed <laughs> at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars were so gallantly there as the rocket were there and the twilight's last gleaming. And the rocket's gl- red glare were so gallantly there. Burst stripes were all there, and the rockets were there. Ellen, maybe that's why Jason Aldean is burning them, because there are too many. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> I never thought about that. He's culling the herd, if you will, of the flags. Mm. And after all, China makes all of our flags. China. We don't have a Betsy Ross factory up the road here, so. Who's uh, that? I know. I'm sorry? <laughs> I, I know who Betsy Ross is. Of course you do. It's Diana Ross's sister. And she is uh, responsible for many, many things, not least of which launching the careers of many budding singers and comedians back in the day. Alan, there's only 25 million people in Australia compared to about 300 million here. That is true. 75% of Australia is outback, and right? They... So they're concentrated in those cities. Yeah. But even in those cities, per capita, they don't have a lot of Australian flags. Hey, I think and she didn't say kind of what she's saying. Crap about how there's a bunch of outback stick houses here. Probably almost as many as there are flags. That's the insidious so, part. Mm-hmm. You'll notice she didn't say anything about her blooming onion, did she? It's not like we're just representing America here. Oh, guess what? You want to go to Italy? Don't have to. You can go to Olive Garden. Yeah, guess it's, what? We, Take a boot uh, out of your closet and look at America, it. It's just like going to Italy. America basically has the whole world at every shopping center because you can go to any restaurant that is worth going to in another country. Or it's you right can just there. go to a cheesecake factory that has... All of it. And by the way, you know, they like to point out people who are um, uh, people there in Australia do like to point out that the Outback Steakhouse is a completely manufactured thing. Right. They're like, it's not a real thing over here. It's not something that got imported to the United States. It's something that you guys made up appropriating Australian culture. Uh, Aussie man here, we don't even have onions. That's not something you can't make them bloom. Because they don't exist in Australia. What we do have is six or seven flags per capita of every two million people. Well, that was my question, and maybe you know this. Uh, is a bloomin' onion like an Australian STD? No. Oh. <laughs> a bloomin' onion is something that y'all made up. Uh, we say y'all down here. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> maybe. Oh, you're in Southern Australia. <laughs> Southern Australia. <laughs> well, maybe if you guys had some food people wanted to actually eat, you never we had a veggie done that. bite, bro. No, very salty. Nobody, very, nobody wants very salty. Bite. Well, that's what we plan off lagging. Very salty. Vegemite, we eat it out of the can with a spoon as we watch our kangaroos fight. I mean, I'll have a Tim Tam now and then. Maybe. You've never heard of a Tim Tam? Maybe a Pavlova. Those no. are delicious. Just, uh, and your chicken parmesan is unparalleled. What's that, what's that beer that we drink? Foster's. Foster's. Australian for beer. <laughs> oh, watch your accent there for a moment. <laughs> yeah. Foster's beer. She's like Rose Byrne going yeah. in and out of the <laughs> thing there. Like, what's that beer called that we have? <laughs> I've got to uh, 